God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad therein. This is the M.T. Zion Cathedral Church where we are spending time in its word on this evening. And the vision of this house is that you know God, you discover purpose, you identify gifts, and you serve to make a difference. Will you bow with me in a word of prayer? God, again, we honor, salute, celebrate you for your sovereignty and your superiority. Uh, there's no one equivalent or equal to you. We only experience pretenders because you don't have any contenders. And for the time that you allow us to spend time in your word, I thank you for those that take the studying of your word seriously. Now saturate us so that we know what to say and what to think and what to do as we experience life. Those things that are considered to be good and those things that are considered to be challenging. But you're well able to help us navigate our way through. Now get all of the glory as you add to our story. We're trusting your spirit to be the teacher the helper and the witness of God in this place. Stand in my body. Think with my mind. Speak with my tongue that your kingdom come and your will would be done in this place. Amen. We are now in our fifth lesson of this series on your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are powerful. On last week, we spent time uh, with the prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer of thanksgiving. Well, this week, we're going to uh, spend time uh, talking about uh, the prayer of worship and adoration, the prayer of worship and adoration, the prayer of worship and adoration, the prayer of worship and adoration. And we're going to show you uh, prayerfully, it is our desire um, and our, our intent is to uh, possibly engage us in understanding um, that we cannot minimize the worship of God to the singing of songs. We cannot minimize the worship of God through the singing and the instrumental assistance of expressing of expressions uh, to God uh, we're going to show you that prayer is also a form of worship come with me now to uh, the gospel account as John saw it chapter number 11 and verse 41 chapter 11 and verse 41 and while uh, they're putting in uh, your uh, prayerfully being studious and going uh, to it by, by your uh, handheld Bible or by your smart device uh, with us. John is the 43rd book of the Bible. It has 21 chapters. It has 879 verses. It has 19,175 words you will find in the Gospel account of John. John's theme or depiction of the, the gospel as it relates to Jesus Christ is to just acknowledge that he is God. And so John's approach is to share and to show uh, throughout those 21 chapters as we now have it that he's God. And besides him there is no other. And so as we look at this 11th chapter and the 41st verse, it says, Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you uh, that you have heard me. Now, for those that have been uh, in the settings of, of, of scriptural uh, exposure and experiences, uh, we know clearly uh, that this is uh, a story of a relationship uh, between a family and Jesus. The story of a relationship 
uh, between a family and Jesus. And uh, one of the siblings has died. One of the siblings has died. Um, and his sisters have sent word to Jesus that the one that he loveth is dead. The one that he loveth is dying. You need to come immediately. Jesus now uh, uses it as a teachable moment to expose and to enlighten and equip his disciples. And he says, um, the, uh, Lazarus is uh, sleeping. And the disciple says, well, if he's sleeping, he's going to wake up. And then he comes back and says, Lazarus is, is, is dead. He waits four days. He makes his way um, there. And uh, one sister meets him, and the other sister is pouting on him. Uh, one sister meets him, and the other sister is pouting on him. And you all know that we've been on both sides of that spectrum. There have been times that we readily greet, greet God, and then there are other times that we are upset with God because things haven't happened the way that we uh, desire. Uh, when you prayed and asked the Lord uh, to allow someone that you love or care about uh, to not experience death at this time, and the death angel still visits, uh, is, 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 is human nature uh, to be uh, hurt to some degree, offended uh, to some degree, disappointed uh, to some degree. But now, watch what Jesus does. And uh, he tells them eventually, show me where you laid him. Show me where you stopped believing uh, that if I show up, the situation can change even in uh, circumstances that look like they are final. My God, uh, God has a way of moving us beyond what we call final uh, to now acknowledging it as just a phase. Uh, from what we call final to acknowledging it's just a phase. He gets there, and now this is where we find ourselves. And, and he told them, I need you to participate uh, so it will strengthen your expectation for me in the future. So he tells them, take the stone, take the stone away. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Uh, 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 past tense uh, because now something is about to shift and change because uh, uh, one worshipped him uh, and one pouted on him. Uh, one of the siblings worshipped and the other pouted. And so Jesus now shows us that uh, worship has a way of moving him uh, to assist us in our dilemmas. It moves God to assist us in life's dilemmas. And, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. He looked up to his father and he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And if you go on and read, he says, I know you always hear me, but it's not for me, but it's for those that they may believe that you sent me. This is for, for others. And so sometimes uh, you and I are put in precarious uh, positions to be intercessors or intermediators on behalf of others that are not able to respond or invoke or project uh, to God what they need God to do. Now, I, 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 I want to press it a little bit because our focus thought it's rooted in understanding that there are several types of prayers. Can you say several types of prayers? Okay, several types of prayers. Okay, so prayer is a form <clears throat> of exhaling and offering up to God all of our concerns. Prayer is a form of exhaling and offering up uh, all of our concerns to God um, as well as our praises. In each prayer that's mentioned in the Bible, it has a different function, okay? And can be thought of as the breathing process of the Christian. Can be thought of as the breathing process of the Christian, okay? So there are three things that we want to illuminate uh, to draw us into understanding the prayer of worship and adoration, the prayer of worship and adoration. If you will come with me now to Matthew's account of the gospel, uh, chapter number six and verse nine, Matthew's 
account of the gospel, chapter 6, verse 9, will give us a direction as uh, we uh, discuss this discourse. Um, it says, and in this manner, therefore, pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your 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 name. Uh, if you go and you read the previous verses, Jesus is talking about um, in the previous verses uh, that when you 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 know you when you give alms, you do it in private, and the Father rewards you openly. And He tells us not to pray like the hypocrites pray. And then the verse before this, uh, verse eight, uh, uh, verse yeah, verse eight. He tells us the importance of understanding that the Father already knows what we stand in need of before we even act. And so uh, uh, if he already knows what we stand in need of before we ask, um, then asking is important, but there's something that supersedes the ask. It's how we ask. It's not just that we ask but it is also how we ask. Uh, my grandmother used to say all the time, you can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. You, you, you can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. Um, if, 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 if I know how um, to present my ask, or whatever I'm asking, whoever I'm asking, uh, for something, if I know how to present that ask, uh, it can assist me in getting the response that I am desiring or getting it to be considered in a way that if I ask in uh, a condescending or an offensive way, uh, usually that's a turn off to anybody that's in a place or a position of, of influence. Amen? So number one, the prayer of worship and adoration, watch if you will, uh, it says in this manner, therefore pray. Uh, that, word, that word pray here, that word pray, pray, it is actually a compound word. It's the word proscom you are, proscom you are. It's in, it's in the Greek translation, watch if you will, uh, the word pros is the prefix, com you are, is the base of the word, which actually means, watch if you will, it says it moves us toward God answering our wish and request. Okay? Pros. It, it, it moves us toward. It moves us forward. So it is now me going toward God with my desires and my wishes. That's what prayer is. Okay, now it moves me closer to God. It moves me toward God uh, that now I'm able to put my wishes and my desires uh, to him. Okay, all right, are you with me? But then now don't miss that. It says now, uh, look at it a good. It says that when you pray, you pray in this manner. So he gives us not, this isn't the Lord's prayer. This is an example of prayer or model of prayer. He says, First of all, when you pray, pray in this manner, okay? Uh, our Father, or uh, uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the prayer is focused on, the prayer is focused on, watch this, worship to him. Hallowed be thy name. Holy, sacred is thy name. And so I don't approach him just any kind of way. I've, 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 God has been God has been good to me, and I'm pretty sure most of you uh, that are, are watching and, and and that are present, assisting us in making this presentation, um, can say God's been good to you. Uh, but it would be the first time in my 50 years of living that I've ever gone uh, to my parents any kind of way. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't handle them that way. There's a level of respect. There's a level of honor. Uh, there's a level 
of, of, of endearment that I have toward them. So uh, even though the, 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 how they parent me now has been modified because I'm, 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 I'm a seasoned adult now. Um, uh, uh, there's a level of maturity and so they talk to me in a way that when I was younger, they didn't talk to me as freely and openly because I wasn't mature enough to handle uh, the discussion, uh, to handle the dialogue. And likewise, I'm a lot freer uh, to be open and transparent uh, with them. And so when we talk about this, this prayer, um, uh, we want to talk about it today from the perspective of worship and adoration. Worship and adoration. And so now it is to, to hold who I'm moving toward. I'm moving toward God. I'm moving forward toward God to present my wishes and my desires. Okay? Are you with me? And, 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 and so now how I do it, I bombard him with love. Uh, my expressions, the verbiage that I use, the expressions that I give, it's that of worship and adoration. The, the worship uh, and uh, the movement, uh, my expressions that I render unto him, they, they speak. Okay, The words that proliferate from my lips, the, the, the body language that I give off, uh, it ought to speak to God. Uh, and that's the reason um, I think that once uh, things are settled for us in a, in a different way, I think that uh, there will be a populous, uh, population of us that will not take for granted the privilege to be able, uh, as David, when he was taking the Ark of the Covenant and going back into Jerusalem, and he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. And, and, and so one of the things that helps us prevent uh, or, or helps prevent us from uh, taking each other for granted is to always operate and handle one another, in particularly God, with a level of respect and worship and adoration. Okay? So, 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 so now when I say this, what is it that you're speaking well? What is it that you're saying uh, to God? Uh, now, this prayer, uh, let me give you the punchline, isn't per se about us. This prayer is really all about him. And, and, and remember, I told you that the model prayer, that's, that's what it does. Can, can, can you, you, want, you want to hear it again? Okay. Now, when the model prayer has three divisions. It's about God. It's about us. It's about God. Okay. Let me, let me help you see it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All about God. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's all about us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's all about him. So when I make it about God, God makes it about us. And so now we ought to close about making it all about him. So, so this, is what, this, is what, this is what happens when, when, when you adore somebody. And, and I didn't know how, 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 how much to push the envelope, but there, there, there's a few of us in here and possibly those that are watching uh, by way of, 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 of watching us virtually. Uh, uh, there was an artist by the name of Prince, and, and Prince had a song called Adore, okay? Until the end of time, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I truly adore you, okay? And so, so this, this adoration that you and I ought to have to God, you know, until time ends, 
And this is how he 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 serenading the sisters. Uh, 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 you know, hey, you you are adored by me, adorned by me, uh, respected by me, held in high esteem by me. Now let, let's move on. Uh, let's let's I, I take some of you to places that we don't want you to necessarily get lost. C come here, come come back. So now we understand that worship, proscomia, proscomia, this this prayer. Of worship, uh, it 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 moves me toward God. It gets me in uh, the presence of God to let my wishes and my desires be known to Him. What is it that you desire? What is it that you want from? Me? When 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 we've been handled right, you know. Uh, um, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I got my clothes. I seen my way out of this. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24 helps us give, give us clarity and direction. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, okay tells us what is God. God is spirit. Okay? All right? And then it tells us what we are supposed to and how we are supposed to express ourselves to God. Okay? Listen to the text. And those that worship him must, okay, this, this command like must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. Capital S, spirit, pneuma. Uh, the breath of God, the essence of God, the expansiveness of God. You, you, you don't see the wind, but you experience the effects of the wind. Okay? So I don't see him, but he's affecting every aspect of my life. Teach boy. And so now uh, I, I'd like to use this loosely uh, uh, that so so now um, he says my spirit has to connect to his because we we are spirit that have a soul that live in a body we 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 are spiritual beings having a human experience and so there is a timeline that all of us have in this human experience. And so God tells us emphatically that those that worship him must worship him. Watch this. So now, I don't want you to miss this. Um, um, we, we, mm, um, if it's real worship, we're in the spirit and we're not concealing the truth. Let, let me break this down. Let me break this down. So now, when, when we talked about prayer, it was a compound word, right? Uh, uh, pros pros proscomia okay that was the word now the the word for worship here is proscom okay let me help you so it is to move us toward god pros the prefix pros okay kum watch it is the depiction of how um a dog adores his master okay uh uh, it, it, uh, and so I know that that might be too graphic for some of us, so let me come in another way. It is, watch this, it is to move toward God in a prostate position. It is to, it is to say and to recognize um, uh, his awesomeness and his magnificency to the degree that you don't approach him just any kind of way. So, so, so now... My concern is uh, one of the things that I've, I've, we, we, we come to worship him too casually. Okay, let me, let me, let me put it another way. Um, he says, my private practice will be seen in my public presentation. So, so if, I don't, if I don't practice in private, um, certain behaviors and mannerism, it's going to be challenging to show something different in public. So, so, so my private practices are often seen in my public presentation. Okay? 
Okay, so 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 if if I don't spend time in worship and in prayer uh, privately, it'll be seen in how I behave or present things publicly, and so this prayer of worship and adoration says, in essence, watch now, uh, it, it, it causes the power of God to be released. Okay? It releases God's power. Okay? So now when I, when I come to the God, I know that he's a spirit. Okay? Uh, and, 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 and now as I worship him, because it's not worship if it isn't in, in spirit and in truth. If, if, if I'm not connecting to him, and that word truth, it means uh, to not conceal anything. Woo! <laughs> it is to be in a place of, of liberty uh, to express my love for him. It, 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 it's nothing worse than having to try to hide how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how you feel because you, you, you in some cases uh, you don't want to be offensive to others uh, because we, we deal with a competitive and we, we live in a competitive and jealous society you know um, uh, I, was, I was in I was yeah, let me move on I ain't going to touch that Okay, so, so, so now it releases the power of God. It, and, and now it's, it's almost like, have you ever been to a balloon releasing uh, ceremony? Uh, and, and, and everything has been put together. And what ends up happening is that uh, the balloons uh, begin to uh, go into the atmosphere. Please don't miss this. So, so, so my worship uh, gets into the atmosphere where God is. My, my, my worship uh, in prayer, then it, it, it allows God to come to where I am. Uh, 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 are y'all understanding this? Okay, so it releases the power of God. It says to God that we put him above everything else. And, and, and when, when he knows that there's no interference, okay, remember, remember, thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember when Abraham uh, um, now has a knowledge base of God, a relationship with God, and God tells him in Genesis 22 to, 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 to offer Isaac up as a sacrifice. And Abraham says, watch me and the lad go yonder to worship, and we shall return. Okay. Uh, uh, we, 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 we're going to uh, sacrifice something. To say to God, and Isaac didn't know that he was the intended sacrifice. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, let me get out of this, man. I get excited when I go uh, to talking and the illumination of Scripture begins. So, so are you ready and willing to be offered up to God? What, 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 is it, what is it that's in between you and God? What are you unwilling to offer? So God had to, to, to see, have I given him too much? To where now, uh, if I ask him for it, will he be reluctant in releasing it unto me? And, and I don't want anything that's, that's, that's that, in, that I'm that endeared to, that if God requests it, I'm unwilling to give it, to give it up. Okay, now come, come quickly, uh, come quickly. Isaiah uh, chapter 25, Isaiah chapter 25, uh, verse number 1. So, so, so worship releases the power of God. Worship releases the power of God. Can, can, can you just, okay. So when I pray in, 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 in the format or the type of prayer of worship, what it does, it says, I want to invoke the power of God. Okay. Uh, 
So worship releases the power of God. Worship releases the power of God. So Isaiah 25 and 1 says, O Lord, you are my God. He makes it personal. I will exalt you. So he says who he is, and now he says what I'm doing. Okay? So when I recognize who he is, there ought to be something that I do. You, 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 can't, you, can't, say, you can't say that you worship him and, and do nothing. Some, some expression has to be released. You know, I, I, and I'm not even saying that even when we're in prayer and we're, we, we're, we're in a place of worship in our prayer, uh, I don't think everybody does it the same way. You know, I clap. I jump. I might run. You know, yes. Uh, I might weep. But, uh, but he says, express something. And, and, and so worship mandates that we express, we give off some expression, some reverence, some adoration toward God. Okay? Are, are, are y'all with me? I will praise your name. Okay? I'll praise your name. Okay? All right? Are, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? See, see, this season has caused the landscape of my understanding and uh, how we move ministry forward uh, from this point uh, on to be totally different. To be totally different. And so uh, whenever and however the Lord eventually allows us together again, expect a different ministry. Expect a different way of operating. Mm. It's, it's, it's a mandate uh, that, that we, we, we do things. He says, I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsel of old of faithfulness and truth. Huh. Okay. So he says who he's worshiping. He says how he's worshiping. But then he says why he's worshiping who he's worshiping, how he's worshiping, and why he's worshiping, okay? Because he's really saying, in essence, how much he loves us, okay? Now, verbal verbiage without actions to support it is really counterproductive. Words without actions to support it is really counterproductive. Okay? Because faith without works is even dead. So I can't say I love him. And then there is no expression being exemplified to support what I'm saying. Okay? So my actions have to support my words. And my words should also support my actions. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And, 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 and so now uh, the question is asked, uh, the little baby, the little girl, how much do you love me? And she stretches her arms out wide. She stretches her arms out this much to, to, to suggest uh, that there's no limit on how much I love you. Okay? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Hmm? Okay. So, so what is it that um, um, I, um, I, 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 um, I, 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 I try to maximize my day with um, with information that that causes my thinking to always be improving, to always be improving. And I was listening uh, to something today, and um, um, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, the late great Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, says, uh, "Do you know what causes change?" He says, "Anger." 
Anger causes change. You, you, you have to detest what it is you're unwilling to accept to the point that it pushes you to do something different. If you keep accepting what you don't want, you ain't angry enough to, 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 to do something differently. Um, so um, for those that are not on social media, I, I, I shared uh, something uh, today that um, I, I, um, I'm in a different age bracket, and so there are a whole different level of tests that come along uh, with, with staying uh, alert and attentive to your body and things of that nature. And so I had to get a procedure done. And um, one of the things that they required is that I take the COVID test. Uh, I, 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 and and uh, 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 that was a that was an interesting experience, but uh, but thank God your leader uh, is is negative as it relates to uh, the virus, and 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 so um, in in prepping to go through this process and things of that nature, I went and saw um, a, a physician, and they looked at my charts and looked at my development, and they were they were fascinated uh, with my weight loss and. Uh, the, the 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 definition um, that 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 I'm now uh, I'm now rocking and and um, uh, they they made a statement and 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 asked me was I on steroids and initially I got offended I you know I, I was I was I was a little I didn't I didn't like but once I processed it because some people take shortcuts to get to success but but then. Uh, the illumination that, that I got from that is do something so well that it has folks guessing how you accomplish what you were attempting to achieve. Okay. Uh, what, what is it, what is it that you're willing to modify? So I modified it. My, I modified my eating. I modified my conditioning of my body. So there are certain things that I gave up because I didn't want to at one time because she never asked me. And people will see your transformation uh, and make observation, but never have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I said people will see your transformation uh, and make observations, but never have a conversation. She never asked me why, what motivated me, what became my why. I didn't want to take, I didn't want to take, get shots and take medicine. And so in order to do that, I had to change some things. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? And so uh, when I realized that this physical body, this, 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 uh, this, this, this earthen vessel that, that houses who I am, okay, this earthen vessel that houses who I am, um, um, uh, is my vehicle to get me everywhere that I need to go in the earth. And so I worship him when I take care of my temple. When, 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 I, when I don't eat any kind of way, live any kind of way, do just anything, that's an expression of God, thank you for your counsel. Okay? Thank you for being faithful and true. So now you've given me this body. And I must steward it and take care of it in a way that say, I love you. Listen, he even uses the analogy of this in marriage. And, and, and talks about, from a spousal perspective, neither one of the bodies being their own. And now, come on, y'all, you're thinkers. It's no way that your body can't be your own. It's your body. You live in it. But... But, but from a metaphoric perspective, he was saying that when you covenant with another individual, a man covenant with a woman, a woman covenant with a man, he says what, what, what happens that you handle yourself with, in a way that you're always thinking about them. 
And they should handle themselves in a way that they're always factoring you in. And now because we, we're married to him by being in his family, we should always handle ourselves in a way that we're thinking about him. Because that's what he did when he was in the earth form. He handled his way, handled himself in a way that it suggests that he was always thinking about us. Let me get out of this. And so Psalms 145, stanza 3. Psalms 145, stanza 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Okay? Now, remember? Okay? So, so when we look at these, these three things that we are talking about as it relates to a prayer of worship and adoration, uh, what we're saying that worship releases God's power, okay? Worship also tells and shows us how much we love him, okay? But then, but then worship lastly says how good he is. Okay? Because when we are in a point uh, and praying in worship, we make it all about him. You're awesome. You're magnificent. You're wonderful. You're kind. You're just. You're forgiving. Okay? Uh, you're faithful. You're true. You're magnificent. You're almighty. You're our beginning. You're our end. You're the first. You're the last. You're our shepherd. You're our shield. You're our shelter in the time of storm. You're our present help in trouble. Mm, you're that good. You've never left us, neither have you forsaken us. You're that good. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. You're, you're, that, you're that good. You're king of kings. You're Lord of Lords. You're that good. You're a faithful father. You're a sacrificial son. <laughs> You're an indwelling spirit. You're that. You're that. You're that. You're that. You're that good. And so, well, when we think about this, um, it's it's. It's, I thought it was cute and, and it would be good to close. Have, have, you remember growing up and, and, and uh, you would be rewarded sometimes for your obedience? And uh, it's like a kid being promised a popsicle or ice cream or something. It's, it's, it's almost like uh, the ice cream man. Once you hear that noise, that music, all of the kids in the neighborhood would begin to go and ask for money because they wanted to get something off the ice cream truck. And so when we get these different types of prayers down, hallelujah. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the ice cream truck. But what it does it puts us in the position that if we behaved ourselves, if we've been obedient, if we've come before him right to be able to put our acts out there and not leave empty-handed. It's nothing worse than going to the ice cream truck and seeing others make a purchase and you're able to see all of what is on display and not be able to put in an order yourself because of our disobedience, because of us not properly being in good standings with the Lord. And so prayer is a form of worship, and it's advisable to start off your prayer adoring who you're talking to because it makes the acts a lot easier. We pray that this has been helpful to you. Heads about eyes are closed. Believers are praying. 
God, again, we thank you for this time in your word. And we pray in the name of Jesus uh, that there's been illumination to your revelation. I pray for those that uh, will saturate and rehearse these truths as is emailed out. Um, and not only that, for those that would go back and look at this teaching again. Have we spent too much time about making our wishes and desires known and not enough time about adoring and worshiping who you are? Thank you for this time. Thank you for your truth. Now cause it to help us triumph over every trial, tribulation, and tragedy that we might encounter in life. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Well, we pray that this has been help to you, uh, that this truth is an eye-opener uh, for us, and uh, you're now assessing in your own personal prayer life, uh, have you spent enough time in worship? Or do you only get in before him to make your wish and your desires known? See, when, when, when his spirit and your spirit connect, it's no longer about what you desire. It's about what he's desired and designed for your destiny that becomes the root of why you do what you do. I'm so excited for those of you that will take this truth and put it into application. And I promise you, you'll see change in, in your situation. All you gotta do is just do right. And I tell you, right has a way of showing up uh, in, in ways that are indescribable. Well, we move to the part of our worship our time and study uh, that we appeal uh, to those that are in need of a commitment and a connection, a way of committing to God and being connected to a local fellowship, a way of committing to God and being connected to a local uh, fellowship, a local group of like-minded believers uh, in a word-based church that uh, gives us the opportunity to grow in our relationship with God, that's vertical, and to grow in our relationship with one another, that's horizontal, okay? And so the first thing is to uh, acknowledge who he is and confess who we are. To acknowledge who he is and to confess who we are. For if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, will be saved for with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness this is your opportunity and your privilege that if uh, this truth then you know and you see now even more clearly that the God of the worlds uh, loves you and he uh, wants to love on you even the more acknowledge who he is acknowledge who he is he's king he's lord He's master, he's savior, he's our refuge, he's our comforter, he's our keeper. Acknowledge who he is. But secondly, confess who you are. For the scripture tells us that if we confess with our, confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if I own it, Lord, uh, I've missed it. Lord, I messed up. The Bible says he, he forgives us. Okay. The second area is not only relational, but the second, you can return and be restored. All of us have been like sheep that have gone astray. Because I strayed, I don't have to stay. I can come back and never have to look back or go to the back of the line. God will line you back up right. He has a way of doing that. And so now, secondly, uh, Isaiah tells us that we've been like sheep that have gone astray. But he says he'll remove our sins as far as the east is from the west never to bring them up again. I'm so glad that he's not holding what I messed up against me, but he's looking forward uh, to seeing manifest what he's put in me. Last but not least, if you're in need of a residential place of worship, 
a, a group of people that you can call your spiritual family. The MT Zion Church uh, is a loving ministry, loving God through loving people. It's about people. It's about people. God loves God loves people. And uh, so he has ways that he does what he does and when he does it and where he does it. Uh, so uh, he says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. And so this is the reason we try to make uh, the opportunities uh, for us uh, to be intentional about our gathering, to be intentional about our gathering, that it is always Christ-centered and God-glorified. Okay, so even as we prepare to unveil some of the newer things or the newer ways we're going to be touching uh, the membership and giving the membership an opportunity to engage uh, one another, uh, it's, it's intentional. And until the structure and the dynamics of what we want to see happen is, 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 is honorable unto him, is, is ready, we, 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 we don't want to, we don't want to, mishandle uh, this moment. I don't want to mishandle this moment. Amen? Okay. And last but not least, if uh, you've been helped and blessed by this teaching, the opportunity to share uh, in the giving, uh, the opportunity to share through your giving, the opportunity to share through your giving, you should see on the screen now uh, the multiple ways that uh, we uh, support uh, the work of what's going on here. Um, as well as being able uh, to um, enhance this facility and uh, to do well, to help others. Um, uh, this is your opportunity to give. Uh, join me in giving on today. Uh, you can give by way of Cash App to the ministry in both locations as well as to uh, the lead servant and uh, online giving. Uh, we have an online giving platform through Givelify. And last but not least, uh, again, thank you all uh, so much for the way that you continue to support our work and our efforts uh, by bringing um, your tithe and your offerings and your love offerings and your other gifts uh, to the ministry. We appreciate and applaud you on every level, and we pray that you're staying safe uh, and that you're operating in wisdom as you move. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Repeat after me. We are great people. We have great power. We leave to get great proof. Now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of his precious spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Know God, discover purpose, identify gifts, serve to make a difference. Are you ready to take the next step in moving your life and ministry forward? It's time to get a better understanding of who God has called you to be and how your unique gifts fit in the kingdom. Zion is a place of growth and deeper understanding of the word of God. Give your time and talent to truly make a difference in the lives of others. Join us as we do life together. Find your fit, find your faith, find your future here at the Mount. Let's go. That brought some friends with me.